Weld School channel. Today we're taking a look at the real cover bracket. We can find this down here in the title block. This is actually a blueprint out of the blueprint reading for welders. It's a send gauge uh, textbook. It's uh, been around for quite some time. The current edition is the ninth edition. Um, they, they keep updating and making some improvements on this um, as time goes on. And it's actually a really popular blueprint reading book uh, found for students that are taking uh, welding courses. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run through this. And I'm going to start out by making a bill of materials. Uh, so I went ahead and made a box here with some information that I can fill out uh, based on this print. And then we're going to go ahead and cut these pieces up and fabricate this part. Uh, so if we look at the actual overall print, we can see a couple orthographic views. We have a front view, a top view, and a left side view. Um, throughout this print, they actually purposely leave out some of the lines. They want you to be able to identify that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw those hidden lines in there um, as well. So we're going to go ahead and find the parts that we are going to need to cut and prep for fabrication. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a look right up here. We have this little piece of angle iron. If we look here on this front view and then we follow it over to the left side view, we can see that it is a uh, little chunk of angle iron. It is a one and a half by one and a half by one eighth angle and it's a half inch in length. So they went ahead and did a good job uh, pointing all this stuff out. They're not making you uh, really search for the answers on this one in particular. Uh, it's actually right there in front of you. So it's a one and a half by one and a half by one eighth angle. And then we're going to cut that down to one half inch. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and call that part number one. There are no balloons on this actual print to identify each piece, so we'll just call it number one. And it doesn't give us the material, but we can find down here in the bottom right corner that the material is low carbon steel. So I'm gonna put LCS here. Our next piece, uh, or pieces I should say, are I'm gonna look at these here. If I look, if I follow the front view up to the top, I can see that they are square tubes. You can see them also over here in this left side view. And again, they are giving us the sizes. Otherwise we could um, find out what C is and then subtract out these uh, sizes or dimensions and then go ahead and take that final number and divide by two since we have two. Uh, but let's just keep this simple. We're gonna go ahead and call this Part number two, we have a two by two by one eighth by seven and three eighths square tubing, not rectangular and not round. And we need to find what this length actually is. So we have over here on the right side, we have a seven and three quarters, but that includes a three eighths bar flat bar down here at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that 3 eighths, which should actually take us to seven and three eighths length. So seven and three eighths. And we actually need a quantity two for this one. Low carbon steel. All right, so we have the angle iron, two tubes. We're gonna go ahead and look at this longer flat bar up here at the top. We can tell it's a flat bar. We have a two and a half inch dimension here. And we do have a three eighths down here. The print did not actually add the thickness up here uh, or anywhere on the print. So we're assuming it's three eighths. It's matching the uh, bottom bar. Uh, whether that was just a mistake on the publisher or not, we don't know. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and go thickness, three eighths by two and one half, and then we need to determine what the length of this is. So we have a total length of the entire project being 15 and one eighth. However, 
this bar starts farther in than this bar down here. So all we need to do is subtract one and one eighth from one and one half being a three eighths. So then we could subtract that three eighths from 15 and one eighth. And that would leave us with 14 and three quarters. And then we could just write bar, everything's quantity one. The only difference is they are telling us that we have CRS, cold rolled steel, for the bottom. So we're going to assume that's going to match the top. So we're going to do cold rolled on that one. And then our last piece would be this bottom bar here. We're going to call that part number four. They're going to go ahead and give us this dimension here. So we have a 3 eighths by 2 and 1 half by, it says 10. Bar CRS. So this is a relatively easy bill of materials to put together. We can go ahead and find our, our uh, materials and start chopping it up and fabricate this part. Before I go there, I wanna, I wanna point out a couple things. Um, we do have a bunch of dimensions we can find. Uh, you know, we can start with A over here. We have a two and a half inch bar. I noticed that we have a one inch TYP, one inch TYP from the bottom edge to the center of this hole, from the center of this hole to the center of this hole up here, which would leave us with a half of an inch up here at the top. So what's missing at A is one half inch. If we look at B over here, we already did solve that. We said it was the 15 and 1 8 minus the, the difference between these two. And that left us with 14 and 3 quarters inch. Down here at the bottom, they're really already giving it to us. Um, we could do some math and, and figure this out, but let's, uh, well, here. We got 1 and 1 half plus 1 and 1 half is 3. Plus another three, we have six. We know these bars are two and two. We know that that would then be 10. But again, it is right in here. Sometimes we overlook this. So maybe you would actually do the math. So this would be 10 inches. And then we have uh, D up here. And what we would do to figure this number out, this is probably one of the more tricky ones. We have this 15 and 1 eighth, and we can subtract our 10 we would then have five and one eighth remaining between here and this end. If we subtract out one and five eighths, we would be left with three and one half inches. Now we have a half inch length for this angle iron, but it is a center line. So what is half of one half? We would then subtract one fourth of that, and we would be left with three and one quarter for D. Okay, we then have our E over here. We have a two inch bar. We know this is a one and one half, so this is going to be one half inch. And then they went ahead and put this dimension on here. Uh, you know, if we were squaring this up, we probably don't need this dimension so much. Uh, but it is a triangle. We're looking at the hypotenuse. You would then use your A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We have a three. So three squared plus whatever this distance is here, which we are given four and seven eighths squared equals c squared. 3 squared is going to be 9. And then we would have 4 and 7 eighths squared, or maybe we want to just put 4.875 squared. Plug that in, or we could do the long math doesn't really make a difference. And then we would be left with c squared. So we have 9 plus 23 0.765 equals C squared. If you add these two together, we have 32.765 equals C squared. 
go ahead and do the square root of that and then C would equal approximately 5.7, put that way, inches for F here. We're gonna have one, two, three holes drilled at 930 seconds on this base plate. And then this horizontal piece going across the top, we are going to have a quarter 20 UNC. We're gonna go ahead and tap through uh, in four places. So one, two, three, four. If you look at a chart, you can find out what size a quarter 20 is. And that is a number seven, which is a point two zero one zero diameter drill bit. Let's go ahead and put this thing together. Mm -hmm.